Okay, I just want to show a quick how to uh, use Scrap Chop on uh, Swipe Cut. It's a great little time saver for those weird little parts uh, that you might do. So this is a DXF. This is one of those artistic-y things that people put on their walls. It's a wine bottle. Um, okay, so we import this into the primary document. You cannot do this in Nest. You cannot do this in parts. You have to do it in primary document. Uh, so we brought the part over. Uh, you can do whatever micro tabbing, micro joining or whatever, but this is just how to do uh, the chop program. Okay, so we're in chop, we have chop, it's lit up, we can click on it, and what do you know, it's going to let us actually do something. Let's do, there we go, uh, 15 millimeter chop, and why it lets you do it is because you're in primary document. If you're in the other program, it just says uh, command chop and it doesn't do anything. So in primary document, it lets you do something. Uh, now, obviously, some of these shapes, like right here, ooh, that's a little busy. I don't want it to slit this. That's, that'll cause all sorts of burns and melting. So let's go to optimize, let's go to chop, and let's make this, uh, let's do it by line count instead. And we're going to do, uh, is it that one is zero? Let's try that one. Okay, there, now we've cut it into two pieces instead. Uh, ooh, I don't like this one either. Let me let me go optimize, chop, and I better do four on that one because it's a bigger piece, right? So let's do four and click OK. And now it's four little pieces. Um, this one, let's just do, again, I'm just kind of showing you how you can do it. You don't have to do it like this. You don't have to make all the exaggerated concern sounds. Oops, not like that. Let's do that again, and we'll do two on that, zero on that. All right, so that's looking a little bit more promising, and it looks like, you know, again, I got this bigger piece. Let me optimize that a little bit, and we're going to just do two and two. And that looks a little bit better. Uh, you, unfortunately, you can't move the lines. That'd be, I think it'd be kind of nice if you could, but you can't. Um, but it lets you chop these pieces up a little bit more. Uh, let's see what it looks like on a simulate. And let's go ahead and just click simulate. So a minute 20, and it's going to do all this stuff where it chops the piece out. Pretty cool if you ask me. And that looks like some time saved. All right, let's see if we can do this in the real world. I rotated it and changed everything, so I didn't want to think I was cheating or anything, so we're gonna go ahead and modify this. We're gonna chop. Yeah, okay. I don't think anything will get stuck like that. And that looks fairly reasonable, and my compressor is, well, the chiller is down to temperature, and I'll fire everything up and laser cut it. I'm gonna do it with the door open. I don't like doing that, but you can't probably see it otherwise. It's gonna take about a minute to do this, so I'm gonna hold the record and I'm gonna duck around the corner. The blow is on and I'm gonna hit start. this particular thing I've done it like twice horrific pain every time the parts never it always kept up and kicked cause trouble so that would be a good illustration if it worked I'd be amazed at myself that smell I didn't micro joint the thing, so I should be able to just pick it up. Ah, now what do you think of that? All right, obviously it's not the most complicated shape, but the idea of cutting the scrap into something that actually falls into the tray, let me see if I can see down in that tray. Fast and away. Okay, I'm gonna take my glasses off. Shutter, okay. And stick 
boogie down the tray. Yeah, there we go. All the little pieces fell down all the way to the tray. Again, they were small enough that they didn't get hung up, didn't cause any trouble. <coughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the process for doing uh, scrap chop. So what I've done here is I've went ahead and nested in a part that's been scrap chopped uh, into the nest result. And the way you do that basically is you're in your primary document, you've done your modification. Uh, what you do is you do file save as and you save it as a laser document. You don't save it as a DXF because this is the DXF result is this one. So after doing the scrap chop and saving it as a DXF, it deletes all the scrap chop because the scrap chop is done in the laser software. DXF, it's still just lines. Uh, so if you want to do the scrap chop, if that's something you're wanting to add to your parts, you save it as a laser document. And now you have those optimizations added in, whether it be micro joints or uh, scrap chop, uh, cooling lines, uh, multi uh, layer, uh, processing where you do like uh, maybe an engrave line or a cut line. Uh, again, all those optimizations are saved as a laser document and it reimports the layers. Again, important that you don't change your layers. You have, I think, 16 of them. So unless you're getting into a whole bunch of stuff, you should be able to, you know, re reuse those uh, layers uh, across your entire list of uh, parts. So uh, anyway, that kind of covers the scrap chop and how to get it all the way into a optimized part and onto a nest result.